Chapter 58 Five men in black fatigues, armed to the teeth, with the weapons they were ordered not to use, rode in the back of the limousine in silence. There was a large wooden crate on the floor between them. Property of the U.S. government was stenciled neatly on its side. They weren't to open it until given the okay from the driver. No one asked why. They knew better than to question orders from the director. They glanced indifferently at each other. Their eyes said all that needed saying, which was nothing. But the growing tension was electric. Each agent's assignment was in a different part of Chicago. One was a bank teller. One was an executive for the Sears Tower. But none of them knew the other, not even socially, and all of them usually worked alone. This assignment was different, but not altogether unexpected. The agency moved in mysterious ways. For them, it was just another day at the office. It was the daylight that confused them. An assignment like this, a classic snatch and grab, wasn't usually performed until at night. They assumed in group conscience that whoever they were after was either incredibly important or incredibly dangerous. They had no fear concerning that. They knew their capabilities and were trained to handle anything. The only disturbing part of this was the order denying them the use of their weapons. They wondered, a target so important the director suspended sanction authority? To their knowledge, Tom Granger never did that before in the history of the agency. The driver exited the interstate and slipped onto a dirt back road. It was pitted and marred with holes. The limousine lurched from side to side until the road leveled off. The men in the back struggled to steady themselves. About a quarter of a mile further down, the driver pulled the car up to an embankment and parked. He scanned the area cautiously and then lowered the divider. There was a manila file folder on the seat next to him. He withdrew a black and white photograph and handed it over his shoulder. This is the target, he said, without turning. Memorize the photo and give it back. They passed the picture around, confused. They looked at each other, their eyes asking what their mouths didn't dare. A kid, they thought. They returned the photo to the driver. He slipped it back into the file. Open the crate, the driver said. He waited, listening to the crunching sound and smelling the dry scent of balsa wood. He glanced in his mirror, observing the men as they withdrew the tranquilizer pistols and examined them. Careful, he cautioned. Each dart has enough Thorazine in it to put you out forever. A man feeling around the mouth of the pistol jerked his hand away. The driver pulled his sun visor down and produced a small device with a tiny monitor screen. He handed it back to the ranking agent. This is a tracking device, he said. The map begins over this embankment. We're just under a mile from the target. See the red dot? The ranking agent looked down at the monitor and nodded. He was familiar with the device. Good, the driver replied. That's the target. Your orders are to drug him and bring him here. He waited while the men looked at each other and shrugged. They were sure they would be home in time for lunch. The driver lowered his eyebrows. Don't get overconfident, he warned. I don't know who this kid is, but word has it some of you aren't coming back. Not in this limo, anyway. Come on, he's just a kid, one of the agents braved. His accent carried a sharp Midwestern twang. No, he's not, the driver said. He's your target. Now, get going. We'll rendezvous right back here. The door nearest to the embankment opened. The men slipped out, one after another, double-timing, until they were out of the driver's sight. He listened to their footfalls. When he couldn't hear them anymore, he sat back and lit a cigarette. He wondered whether any of them would be coming back. It stood to reason. This assignment was too weird for it to end without bloodshed. He raised the divider and sucked hard on the end of his Marlboro light, wondering.